All right. When I'm a mother, as you can see in the picture, I have four of them. I have four kids. But the youngest baby sits on my lap. If you judge by the length of my hair, you will know that she's now four years old. <laughs> now, with my firstborn, when I had my first child, she changed my life. Totally changed my life. And this is one of the things that I want to share a little bit. I've done, I don't, I maybe what, uh, six TED talk already. I'm also a TEDx fellow. Um, so every single time now that I get invited to a TEDx speech, I try to come up with a different theory and a different idea to share. And I find today's sharing to be really, really close to my heart. I used to like to play monsters with my kids. Do you play that game with your parents or someone? Like you pretend that I'm a monster today and I'm going to scare you, I'm going to catch you, I'm going to tickle you. And the baby's going to go, ah, I'm scared, I'm scared, I run, I run, I run, I run. And then you go, V, five, four, five, I'm going to catch you and tickle you. So I do that with my kids a lot. One day, one day, she ran into a corner. And I'm going to step out because I'm going to show you how she did it. So she ran. No, mommy, I don't want, I don't want. I'm very scared, 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 right? Corner, right? No way to run, right? And here I am going, thinking in my head, whoa, I got her in the corner, I'm really going to tickle her. Whoa, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm mommy, so big, so big, I'm so big, I'm going to tickle you. And then at that point, and this started something that changed the way I look at things for quite a bit. She's very little. And she was here. Instead of crying because she lost the game, she turned around and she went like, I'm the monster now! I'm chasing you! I'm chasing big mommy! And I'm like, ah! Right back to the circle. And while she was eating my leg, she was like tickling my leg, which is how tall she is, right? She was tickling my leg and stuff like that. I was thinking, oh my god, what just happened? What exactly just happened? I don't think I would have done that. Look, in life, in life, we are cornered a lot of times. We face, we come into a wall, bam, a lot of times. And then we, 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 we just go like, we're stuck. We give up, forget it. You know, we're lost. How could a child be cornered and turn the entire table around? What exactly happened? What went wrong? Is it because we think so differently? We, we, we got it wrong? And that the child is teaching me something so absurdly correct? If you're cornered, jeez, what corner? Turn it around, find a different way, have the courage, face the monster, be a monster yourself. The options are limitless. I was super curious. I asked her again and again and again. So, when you were running, what happened? So, when you were running towards the wall, what were you thinking? All these kind of questions to like a like a like a toddler, a two-year-old okay, who's hardly able to say anything. And after a lot of talking, a lot of talking, a lot of talking, she just went like, "Mommy, you don't make rules." I also can make rules. Oh. Oh. That's right. And I started to think, that's amazing. That is amazing because if she could think that way, that means the question she asked herself before she came up with the conclusion was, who made these rules? Who said, this is my mom's game? Who said, I can't turn around and tickle her back? Who said, I cannot change the rules? So if she had that thought processes in her, why do we lose it as we grow up? Why do we, as we grow older, see a lot of things, a lot of problems, a lot of issues, a lot of things that didn't go right, you know, when we plan A and it's slightly going to B, we, we think it's going wrong. If this is not the way it's supposed to be. Why do we have that recall feeling? What went wrong? Maybe it's the way we ask questions. I think you guys know the story. When we were taught the concept of one husband, four wives. Okay. 
did it when I first knew. <laughs> one how, how, what, where, why, who. I do not subscribe to more than one wife, just so you know. I think it's too much work already, one wife, and you want to marry so many things, son or what. Okay, so in school, when we ask questions, we need the answers. So sometimes we look at the answers, then we ask the questions. In fact, we were taught how to ask the questions by looking at the answers, look at the answers first, then only compute the questions. That's how we learn how to ask questions. That's how we learn how to put the question mark. And we all know the story. We go to school in a class of 40 people. After one session of 40 minutes, maybe one out of 39 people, 40 people, get to ask a question. Only one. The rest of us didn't have a chance. Over time, how many years did we go to school? Um, 12? 15, um, 11 years did we go to school? Over time, not having enough practice at asking questions, and then suddenly in university, the lecturer will look at you and say, All right, any question? Oh. <laughs> what happened when the lecturer asks you any question? And it's not just at university level, right? We're talking about like international forums, international meet. After a press conference, all right, any question? You know all the um, White House clippings that you see, even with Donald Trump, and he asks any question, and every girl will like that. That's because they already know what question they wanted to ask. It has nothing to do with the kind of things that is related to what he's Donald saying, Trump's and therefore they like ask. Donald Duck. So it's always about that. People are increasingly, as they grow older, lack the ability to ask questions. And if you think, huh? But I always ask question what? I always ask, so what to eat ah? <laughs> I also ask, so where do we go today ah, Sunday? I always ask, I want to wear ah? I want to tell you these are not real questions ah. <laughs> Because these questions don't change the world, and don't change you, don't make an impact, don't make a difference. Who cares? So what happened to the real question? What happened to the questions that you really can ask? Or never thought of asking? Or consider? For example... Sorry, I missed this. I'll come back to it. For example, where do you live? Where do they live? Where does he live? What is the answer? Uh, can I know where you live? Yes, can. But no, that one. <laughs> but I want to tell you, that is totally Googleable. <laughs> Google wins the game. But if you look at this, what is the answer you're going to get? An address la, or a country la, or a city la? Full stop la. Full stop. What else? But if you change the question slightly, to why do they live there? you uncover a completely different idea of why the culture of that person, the person that she or he is, the way it is, is caused by the anthropology, the background, the culture, the history, the breakdown, the family, breakdown, the segmentation, what class are you, you completely could now relate to this person in front of you. It becomes different. You see the world in a completely different light. So why do we ask questions that we can find on Google or do a little bit of research, but we are not daring ourselves to ask questions that gives us more insight so that we could do more things? Even question like, for example, where is the school? Again, this is all very Googleable. Perhaps the question needs to be, why is there no school here? Government problems. <laughs> Great! Awesome! And then? Oh, he's very smug now. No doubt, so. But and then, the question needs to be, okay, is there anything we can do? Charity. Things should never be at a full stop. Life is never be it's never about the answer. Life is about the questions. The answers are us, your questions ask. 
The answers are there. It's how you're asking it to retrieve the question, to retrieve the answers, if you think about this properly. So if your questions are not right, your answer is going to sound like a full stop. Or, come, repeat your answer again. Common problems la. <laughs> GST la, all taxes, they, they, they're just eating the money. I just want to say in a text format, right? Yeah. The, the audience don't speak. But, it's interesting that you do, because then I can reply. Yeah. It is not just that. Each and every one of us need to be playing a role. Each and every one of us has the ability to do something beyond. The idea is that we could see beyond. The idea that you are here. You are here because you are looking for ideas. You are here because you want to do more than just blaming the government. <laughs> it's very easy to lay out the complaints, I can tell you already. And it's also awesomely easy to just say, that one out didn't work. Okay, what can you do at your level? So perhaps the questions need to be, why? Why is that the issue like that? Why is it government the problem only? Why can't, it, why can't it be ours? We live in this country. I am not willing to sit down here and wait another 30 years for TN50 to happen and I have no part in doing something about that. I want to be doing something. I want to totally contribute and make sure that it is a world I want to live in. Government is such a small part of how the world be and is going to be. We decide. The why not? The what is, when you are, when you have the courage to ask these questions, when you have the courage to ask these questions, you will be delighted and absolutely enlightening, enlightened by the way you think, by the way you feel that you could find the answers to it. It is not just because I said, hey, consider asking the right question and your world will change. And right now, now that you say, okay, okay, I consider now, I consider to ask the right question. Gee, open my eyes, my world changed. <laughs> For any change to happen, you need to practice. If for so many years we've given up on asking questions, and when the idea here is, Ask the right question, you will find more ideas to do amazing things. But to ask the right questions is a practice. It doesn't just come ching like that. You need to be doing it again and again and again and think that this is not the right question. I think this is not it. I want to ask a different question. Hey, there is, maybe there is another way to ask this question. I'm not framing it right. So for example, one of the amazing uh, things that we did. So this is a bus station, it's a bus stop, okay? This is the back of the bus stop. The front of it, I didn't have a picture because I wanted to show you what we were doing here. Uh, we, we, we took over a bus stop in Putrajaya and we completely changed it. The back of it is what I want to talk about because this is crazy. It is called the venting machine. So what we do is that we got people to come to the vending machine, put money, make believe, because when you go through a process, you kind of make believe you go through it. You put money there, one ringgit, huh? One ringgit. Okay. They can walk from one end of the bus stop to another end of the bus stop to decide what is it you like to buy. And the stuff we are selling are stuff like Ubat Sabar. Ubat lima belas minit extra sebab you lambat. Ubat extra sepuluh minit tidur sebab you tak mau bangun. You tidur lewat lewat. Ubat tak mau gossip. Ubat talk about really building things. Ubat no drama. Ubat, no tired. And you can imagine. I think we drew some thousand um, across thousand different solutions across the boards of the different 
bus stops that we have made and turn this into. What does it do? Is it instead of like me talking like this, telling people to consider what is it about their lives that they want to change and reconsider, we get them to just have go through this exercise and find out for themselves how they've been dealing with lives. That extra 15 minutes, could you really buy it? What if you can? But did you already waste that extra 15 minutes? The idea that Reni shared just now, when uh, the Burger Lab guy, when he talked about the fact that if the meeting is at 1, he'd like to be there at 12.45. My hashtag for it is always, why be on time when you can be early? You know, you don't gain just 15 minutes, you gain more than 15 minutes. Sanity, that's what you gain. But this exercise got a lot of people come, come, come by and ask a lot of really interesting questions to us, which we then collected and we talk about it in different workshops and we bring that to different children across the schools in the country to talk about the things that they would do if these are their problems. We ask them if these are your problems, if it is your problem, do you have solutions to solve it? And out of this, we came up with programs like uh, Young Change Makers, where children below 15 years old are doing amazing things to solve their community problems. We have a child who's six years old, and she bake cakes so that she can raise funds for the orphanage around her house. She started doing it at five because she wanted to help her sister who was brain damaged, um, uh, the, uh, to, uh, to, to make money so that she can send her for um, uh, treatment in, the, in America. But these are amazing children's stories that we were sharing. And if you ask the right questions, you realize that you will have the opportunity to really dream bigger. We brought this show in from Spain, and the question at that point was, a lot of people don't know that theater is happening in this country, or there are a lot of amazing shows happening, but they like to go shopping. And every time they go shopping, on top of that, they'll be complaining, hey, aside from shopping, mm, I don't know what else to do. Lah. There's nothing else to do in Malaysia. Shop, law. Really? Or are you just too comfortable to do other things? Our country is so blessed, but all we do is shop, Lord. So we brought the arts to the people. We brought arts to the shopping mall because people like to just shop, right? Um, and we managed to turn a lot of people into audiences because they've never seen things like this and they realize that, oh, there's just so much more things to do. We brought uh, people, artists from different countries together um, and they're in front of Eva Mosa. Uh, each one of them are actually playing a rock of Eva Mosa and um, the discussion through their physical action acting was about how we have been treating heritage, how we have been, what kind of relationship we are having with um, the things around us, material, spaces. Do we treat them like we come to this space? Oh, it's an auditorium, full stop. We don't imagine anything else. We don't imagine what if all the audience sit here on the stage and you watch something happen on the seat. The idea here is when you challenge the norm, when you challenge what you see, really, it gives you a new idea. You don't necessarily have to do it, but when it gives you a new idea, you realize that your brain has just started to like a flower. This is the black box that we built in the middle of pavilion, bringing us um, to the people. Uh, this has become uh, best practice around the world. Where we talk about it all the time because it's uh, 25 minutes, every single 25 minutes is a show from different countries um, around the world that we brought into this box. Uh, there are amazing uh, doors, if you could see the front, the big color thing. There are three doors like that. One is a normal size one like this. The next one is half the size. And then there's another small one, really, really tiny, like this small. Wow. At the end. And the people who saw it, the people who saw the difference, who asked the questions, will discover the beauty. They will come to this small thing. They will open the door. And they will see the magic in there. 
I'm not telling you the magic. Mm, but I think it's black magic, isn't it? Oh, come on. And yeah, this is a book we did. Getting more people wanting to consider becoming a superpower. If you have a superpower, we want to tell you that one person can do a lot of things, so don't just depend on other people. You can get there. The world does need more superhero. And I'd like to invite you to join me in this moment. I know time's up. To really, when you come to a TEDx, and I have been uh, uh, managing and organizing TEDx a lot, I'd like to invite each one of you to stand up right now. I'm the last speaker, so I have the right to do this. Okay, you have had a full day a full day of ideas being thrown at you, thrown at you and thrown at you and thrown at you. You actually do need just two seconds of you closing your eyes right now. Just close your eyes. And the ones who can't close their eyes usually, I can tell you this, is because you're not comfortable with yourself. Don't worry, nobody's okay with you except me. Just close your eyes. I will give you five seconds of silence where you will review the day and let the idea that really gets to you stick in your head. And you tell your brain this. You need to tell your brain this. Let it seed. Let this become the seed for me to bring on to the world new ideas. Five seconds. This is really the worst time to be on a phone conversation, really, because we all can hear you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You have been a wonderful audience. Thank you.